You are listening to Real Real Estate Today. To reach Deb tomorrow or with questions and comments about the show, please send an email to Deb at realrealestatetoday.com. That's Deb at realrealestatetoday.com. Now, back to this week's program. All right, welcome back to Real Real Estate Today. We are talking about the home, my world famous home buyer seminar, breaking it down for you. So um, there are many other shows in this series. So if you need help finding them, just contact me on Facebook and I'll help you point you in the right direction. As I told my mother last week, Jimmy has sent that show to you. <laughs> She's like, yes, please. I'm like, okay. So I can help you find them. So we are on the sub- segment, uh, which is once you have an accepted offer, what do you do? This is passing into the, we call it the, the longest period of time <laughs> phase where things really get drawn out and you kind of start to get anxious. Um, so at first, here's how it works when you, once you have an accepted offer and in the first like week or two, there's going to be like this flurry of activity and you're going to be like, Oh my gosh. Ah. And then it's going to like grind to a halt because all these people are doing all this stuff in the background. Um, people you'll never meet and you'll never talk to, and you'll never know that they did all this hard work to help make your dream a reality. Um, but once, and then we'll have closing. So that's kind of how it works. So what happens up front where it's really, really busy you're going to be scheduling and performing, uh, having your uh, inspection done and probably doing some more negotiations from that. You're going to be formally applying for financing and making sure that your lender has everything that they need on that. You're going to be going to shop around for homeowner insurance and find the best situation for that. And then you're going to kind of sit around and wait. So my notes here say, ask your lender once a week if the appraisal's done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Your lender will probably tell you, but if you haven't heard anything in a while, you might check in. Uh, and then you're going to sit around and you're going to wait for your lender to ask you for more documentation. That's probably a fair statement. How, how often does that happen? Um, I would say about 90. 90% of the time. They need some. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's always something. And it's cool. Yeah. It's totally cool. Don't panic about it. Don't worry about it. Just expect it. And then, and then what will happen is you'll like, bust your butt to get that information to them as quickly as possible and then you'll sit around and do some more waiting and then they might ask something else and then you'll do some more waiting um, and then you'll ask your realtor what you should be doing and I'll tell you just to go pick paint colors <laughs> uh, and then we'll get to the closing so let's talk about the inspection briefly I've got a couple of shows the complete shows that we did on inspections and we will probably do some more because it's such an important topic so I'm just going to hit it at a real high level here because you can listen to a few other hours for more information. Um, home inspections can cost around 350 to even upwards of $600, depending on what tests are performed. A basic home inspection would be around 350 probably 400 Again, this is my market in Monroe County, Owen County, Greene County, Indiana. Um, you need to pay that. That's another question we get a lot. Like, well, if the seller's paying for my closing costs, can they pay for my inspection? I don't recommend that. Um, A, because the inspection needs to be paid up front, not at closing. And B, because you want that home inspector working for you. And I think a lot of people didn't really think about it. But, you know, service providers work for who they get paid for usually. So uh, you want that home inspector working for you. You want to own that home inspection report. In our market, you typically have around 10 to 14 days to do inspections. Again, that's something we negotiate. That's part of your, what do we call it, your offer package. Uh, of the things that you picture. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. I'm going to start with a P. Here, I coin a phrase and then I can't even like follow through. <laughs> God, I should just close, throw in the towel. Um, so your offer picture is how long to do inspections. Certainly the sooner the better. Uh, sellers like to get through that process and know that that's good and we're moving on. Um, a home inspection, uh, this is one thing I tell everybody, a home inspection is about 50% making sure you're not getting in over your head, that the house isn't falling down around you, that you're not obtaining some sort of hazard, and about 50% education about your new home. So the home inspector is going to talk about um, things you could do to improve the home. That doesn't necessarily mean it's something wrong that the seller needs to correct. It just means that the home could be even better, and here are some things that, you know, If you're going to do some projects, here's some things you would think about doing. Um, And definitely expect to find things unless it's a brand new home. Now, Karen, what's the the lender's role here in inspections? I mean, depending on what lender you're working with or what type of loan program you're doing, the lender may not ever need to see that home inspection. Yeah, typically in my experience, the lenders are hands off. 
ear, hands over their ears. La, 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 la. I don't want to well, know. Like, don't just send it going. I think, yeah. You know, I just thought it'd be helpful to have right. it. You know, some lenders will, if once they have it in their hands, they have to put it in the file and yeah. then it could open up other things. Yeah. Yeah. Do not send your home inspection report to your lender. Just don't do it. Yeah, just don't send what they ask it. for. Yeah. Don't send more right. and don't send less. Yeah. Um, so this is really separate from that. Now, if you're getting an FHA loan or a USDA loan or a VA loan, people sort of start to use the words inspection and appraisal interchangeably because the appraiser will check for some condition items, but it's not as extensive as an inspection and appraiser doesn't have the same certifications as an inspector. A home inspection is going to review the grounds, the exterior, the foundation, the structure and the roof, the heating and cooling, interior, plumbing, electricals, um, really goes, to, it takes, I mean, you know, for a normal 2,000 square foot home, it's going to take three to four hours. Like they really check every outlet, go into every detail, check all the doors, you know, make sure everything opens and closes and rolls smoothly and all that. Um, you typically, your realtor can get you names of home inspectors. Um, I always give out a few. Um and that's probably one of the best ways to make sure that you get a good home inspector. I definitely recommend that you plan on being there, if at all possible. Um, I know the one home inspector I do a lot of work with, he really welcomes people standing over his shoulder and watching what he's doing. You know, he, he gets excited when people want to be involved and want to increase their knowledge about the home that they're buying. Um, that, that seems to excite him. So, so be there, ask questions, try to understand. And then what you're going to get back probably, you know, within 24 hours is a report that will rank the various areas of the home and typical terms they use is something satisfactory, which means it's working fine. If it's marginal, it means that it's still working, but, you know, maybe it's cosmetically dented or maybe it's, you know, it's just older, but it's still functioning. Poor means that it's barely working. It's on its last leg. Significant issues or major defects are something that's not working as intended. And then a safety hazard is obviously a safety hazard. Um, your focus really is on the safety hazards and the significant issues. And I think this is really important to understand. You can't ask a seller to fix something that isn't broken. So this is what we run into sometimes. People are like, well, what about the furnace? And I'm like, well, what do you want the seller to fix on the furnace? Talk to me about what's broken. Well, nothing's broken. It's just old. Okay, but the house is older too. Mm -hmm. So is it, you know, out of character? And, and, and again, I just, you know, you have to ask the seller to fix something. Um, and so I've had deals that have fallen apart because the buyers have said, well, the furnace is old. I don't want the house. We well, probably need to just be building something new then. And thank you very much. We're going to keep your earnest money because <laughs> that's not a reason to break the contract that you're right. under. So something to think about and also something to think about when you're walking through the house to make sure that if, if, if your requirement is that you need a furnace that's less than five years old, then you need to know that before you write the offer on the house. Absolutely. Because if it's a 10 or a 15 year old or a 20 year old furnace, but it's working just fine, you're not going to have much of a leg to stand on in terms of trying to get that fixed because there's nothing to fix. Um, so that's sort of the, the, in a nutshell, the inspection process. You will be looking for if there's major defects, um, and then you can negotiate those. I guess I should interject here my other pet peeve, and I know we've talked about this before. People who say, did the house pass inspection? People say that all the time. All the time. All the time. I'm going to get a billboard or 12. There is no pass-fail. It's what you deem acceptable is the buyer. That's pretty much it. There is nobody that says, oh, red flag, shut the house down, got to move out. No. It is what you deem acceptable. So you are in the driver's seat on that. Um, okay, so that's my soapbox there. Other things you're going to do during this period, you're going to apply formally for financing. Karen, could you give us a quick 30-second what that might involve? Hopefully what you've already done up to this point is your lender already has the majority of all that documentation from the pre-approval, pre-qualification piece. So at this point, it could just be updated bank statements and updated pay stubs, which will make your life a lot easier because you're on this, you know, crazy thing about, oh, I just got my offer accepted. Mm -hmm. So you get that information to the, uh, the lender. And in the meantime, the realtor is sending me the purchase agreement. And I'm updating my system. You're locking in an interest rate and now you're signing initial loan disclosures so we're moving things on my end as well 
And so we need to get that process started um, and have it run its course. Right. One of the other things that's being done in the background is title works being ordered so that we can ensure that you're getting free and clear title um, on the property. So that is, is something happening as well. And then I usually tell people once you're done with insurance, that's a good time. Once you're done with your inspection, that is a good time to shop for your insurance. If you want to shop, it's a good time to compare. Make sure that you're you know, looking at bundling. Um, I definitely recommend local insurance agents. Someone you can talk to face to face is usually a great way to go. So that is something that will be on your checklist as well. And then, like we mentioned before, your appraiser is going to be in, or you're going to go into the house. Uh, nothing you're involved with. You're not involved with scheduling. You're not involved with communicating. You're just kind of waiting to hear back that the appraisal is okay. a okay. Um, but the most important thing throughout this entire period of time from when you've had the offer accepted up until closing, which is going to be our next segment, is do not buy anything. Do not finance anything. Don't go take advantage of that five years, no interest, same as cash on furniture. Because anything you do to change your credit picture can mess you up. That's, that is an accurate statement. So don't do it. And keep your job. Please don't switch jobs. Oh, my gosh. That's something I, else, too. Oh, so I've yeah. had that happen. So even if it's a higher paying job, you know, talk to just your wait. lender first. Yeah, yeah just, just wait. Because um, you usually have to be at your job for at least, you know, you need a couple of pay stubs under yeah. your belt before you can close. I had uh, one client. He was so sweet. I had put the fear of God in him so bad about buying anything. He was like, well, there's this motorcycle I want to buy. I was like, Jim, can't buy a motorcycle. <laughs> and he's like, well, it's cash. I was like, Jim, you can buy that motorcycle. If it's cash, it's fine. As long as it doesn't Impact eat into your, your payment yeah, or exactly. your closing costs. Yeah. Right. As long as that. But financing, not good. Mm-hmm. Don't miss a payment of anything. Don't decide all of a sudden I'm not going to make my last couple mortgage payments because I'm going to be selling my house. And nothing like that. Because they will pull your credit. I promise you they will pull it and they will check it again. A lot of lenders do do that. There are some that don't. But, uh, but yeah, just but you, keep being even status if they quo, don't, yeah. Just, yeah. And even if they don't, you never know when they might. Cel- celebrate after you walk out of yeah. your loan closing. The second yep. that loan <laughs> closing is over, you can hit the buy button and go for it. I don't care. All right. We um, are going to take another break, and then we will come back with our final spe- segment on closing. So stick around. You're listening to Real Real Estate Today, your home for smart real estate. 